Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for today's Newbies Workshop on Organization. I am Sunny, Sunlight's Community Manager, and I am at Sunlight today with Sheila, one of your Sunlight Mentors. Hello everybody. And we are going to talk about all things organization. So, with a literature-based curriculum, oftentimes when you're starting out trying to figure out where to put all your supplies, that can be a little bit challenging. So let's go ahead and talk, Sheila, about some ideas. Of course, we have big bookshelves behind us, but if you don't have the space or the setup for this, what are some ideas for storing all of your books? So um, we saw that on the app, some people were posting about small spaces and not having a lot of room to be able to store stuff. So we found a small bookcase around here and we sta staged it for a small space. So this bookcase is 28 by 30 and it's only two, two shelves. We have another one that is a little bit taller and a little bit na narrower. So really wherever you can find space in your home, whether it's your bedroom, the dining room, even a hallway, if you can fit a small space like this, this bookshelf is right now hol holding a full all subjects package K. So right down here we have, on the left side we have all the re read alouds, on the right side we have all the history books, the lower right side is math, the lower left side is science, and then we have the manipulatives, the, um, the science kit, and all of the language art stuff. On top we have the big blue binder, the time, timeline book, and the map. So everything is going to fit on this small bookshelf. Very ha handy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, I forgot to tell you guys, if you're watching and you have any questions, make sure to drop those in the comments, and Sheila and I will answer your specific questions as well. Um, we do want to make sure we're answering those types of things. Like she said, this is going to hold your all subjects package uh, for one level, and you can see there's still space in the middle. So if you have more than one level that you're doing at a time, you have room for that. Um, Sheila, let's talk a little bit about these extra things on top. Um, what can you do as far as like, I see you have the instructor's guide and the timeline and your map. What do you do with those things if you don't have a lot of space? So I have shared before that I did not carry this big binder around. It's very big, it's very unwieldy, and it's, it's, it's just, it's a lot. So I, I consider this my bookshelf for my instructor's guide. I prefer to use what we call a working binder. So you can either use your um, sunlight plant planner and pull out those pa pages and put them in your weekly tabs. Um, but this is still, this is like a one and a half to two inch binder. So that's still a little bit on the big side. I prefer to do an even smaller binder. This is a one inch binder and this is a half inch binder. So you could pull the month from your, um, planner out, pull the pages that, you know, from the week one and put it all in this little half inch binder. And then this can just live either right there or you could tuck it down below. And this is what you would carry around to the couch, to the dining room table, um, in the car. Like, you know, this is much more ma manageable. And you mentioned moving around to different parts of the house, maybe. What are some of our options for moving from the dining room to the kitchen, to the living room, if you want to carry stuff with you? Um, I know we've got some stuff in here. I'm gonna we roll have some this props. in here. So this is my favorite thing. It's a rolly cart. You can kind of see it's got three, three shelves. And we've outfitted it with um, se several different size baskets that can hold. You know, this big one here can hold um, a full notebook size, like eight and a half by 11. This one, you could stand up books and tuck it under. This one here would hold small things such as your language arts um, bingo game, you know, the little do doodads that come as part of your kit. And so that way you can put everything in here and roll it wherever you need to. Next to the couch for doing your couch time stuff, by the dining room table and then at the end of the day <laughs> yeah so this is something that i got um, because my kids were leaving things all over the dining room table at the end of the day and instead of putting it back on our shelves when i got the rolling cart they were able to put things on their shelf and then i can roll this into a closet into the room where we keep the whole year's worth of supplies 
all of that. And the way I do it is supplies on top and then each of my two children have a shelf down below. So I know this is my daughter's shelf. That's where all her books are just for this week or this day. And then my sons are on the bottom. So yeah, love the rolling cart. If you don't have one, this is something that has changed <laughs> our homeschooling, even when you do have big bookshelves, just because they can move things and put them away. And it tucks right out of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about some of these uh, folding storage cubes we have. We have a whole bunch of things in All here. All kinds of ideas. So you guys can see them. So these are, um, you you can purchase these all over the place. I think we got these at tar Target. So these actually fold up and fold flat and fold away. So it does not take a lot of space. They're made out of cloth and cardboard, paperboard. But it's a very ha handy um, container to be able to lo load it up with books. Each child can have their own. They come in different prints, so you could do polka dots for one child, stripes for another child, different colors, all kinds of things. And that way, again, your ch children can put all of their supplies in one tote, carry it wherever they need to, throw all their stuff in there, and then this can go on a shelf, it can sit on top, it can go under a bed, it could go in a closet in their bedroom. Um, it's a very ha handy way to corral things and keep things together. Yeah, and I love what you said about the different patterns. I'm a big fan of that too, is color coding your kids, you know, whether it be their storage or their folders, we'll get to that in a minute too. Um, let's talk about when you uh, have the books on your shelf, the importance of maybe labeling your books or how do you identify between the different programs? Yeah, so Sunlight sells these la labels. Um, they're not very much, um, they're a little bit hard to find on the website, so if you need help, we can help you. Um, but they come pre-labeled -la with, like, this is the one for K. And so what you do is then you just peel them and you put them on your spine with what it is sticking out. So for example, I collected se several that are from E, and this is what it would look like on your shelf. They just li line up nicely and they're color coded so you can quickly tell which shelf they're gonna go on. Um, also, one thing I like to do, this only says E, but you could add, it has a little bit of an, of an overlap. You could add on there with a Sharpie. If it's a history, I, I, I would put H. If it's a read aloud, R A, R for reader, B for Bible, S for science. Like you can la label what it is. So then it can go back on your shelf. Um, I'll, I'm gonna pull, this is what we do for convention. Um, so we do la label K read aloud, and this is just a return label um, that you can run through your printer. So you can customize it however you want. You could even color code the ink if you wanted to, if you didn't want to use this, but this is a lot simpler. It's pre, you know, it's just a sticker. You peel it off and you stick it on. You don't have to worry about lining things up in your printer. That can be a mess. Yeah, and it's something, especially if your kids are far apart in age, mine have a five-year age gap. You think you will remember what book goes with which program, but you do forget that easily. So having the different colors and the different labels makes that really helpful. Another thing, if you update programs between kids, you might be looking for an age-appropriate book for them to read. And so I like to pull from the ones maybe that one child used that are no longer part of the program. And the, the labels really help with that. Um, let's talk about some of the other things you need for school, like school supplies and you know math manipulatives, maybe the pre-K Montessori activities. How do you store those little pieces so that they don't get lost all over the house? <laughs> I am all about corralling things. So any kind of basket, these again are the same kind as the blue one, just in a different color. Even um, I have, this is just a Ziploc container. And in here we have uh, collected all of the little things, the hand, handwriting, um, the chalkboard, the markable map pens, uh, the alphabet bingo game with the little uh, markers, the A to Z, like all these little things can get lost. So it's good to have something that you, you can corral them in. So whether it's a basket like this or something with a lid like this, um, these things, like, my, I don't know about you, but my lids will either melt in the dishwasher, the little tabbies will break, and then you're left with this. This is a great container. Repurpose what you have. You don't have to go out and buy new things. Um, but there's all kinds of different basket sizes that you can do for, for whatever your need, needs are. This is big enough to hold books, and that too can just tuck right into 
a shelf or under a bed. We used a lot of under the bed storage. I found this at Tar Target just this week. This is a clear um, square container that holds all of the preschool materials. Cause you know that preschool box is going to eventually break down cause you're gonna open and close and open and close. This is a great way to store that. You can see what's in it, but it's all corralled. Yeah, I love that. The clear storage, I'm a huge fan of that as well. So this is actually what I have in the top of my rolling cart. I have two of these. I didn't bring the one the kids use regularly because they are at home doing school right now. Um, but it's on a lazy season, so you can set it in the middle of the table. So you can have people on all sides of the table and they can reach what they want. And there's little sections within this. So the one that the kids have at home right now has markers in one, dry erase markers, colored pencils, regular pencils, all the different things. Scissors, Scissors tape, glue, my hot glue gun, you know, <laughs> all of those things that you need to do all of those projects. And what I love about that, there's a little handle. So again, you can put it on a cart, you can stick it under something, carry it. It does fit on a bookshelf as well. Um, so yeah, those are great things for all of those little things. Um, we talked a little bit about the working binder and how to use the planner for that. Um, when we say, you know, take a week or two, what do we really mean by that? Like how, how do we put that into practice in actually carrying it around and then teaching that way? So if you have a working bi binder, you, you will have your week one or whatever week you're on, but let's just say week one, week one, history, Bible, lit, uh, science and la language arts, everything in this small bi binder. And if you need to hit the road, like we did a lot of what we call car schooling, because we had soccer practice and ballet and all the outside of the house activities. We also traveled with my husband a lot for work. Um, and so we would car school. So what I would do is I would grab my working binder and I would grab my sunlight tote bag and ev everything would fit, fit in here. So I would look and see what is my history spine? What is the read aloud? What's the Bible? What, you know, like literally all the books that we would need for that week or even for two weeks. Just look ahead, pull all those sheets out, and then everything fits in your tote. You may have this tote, you might have this tote, or you may not have any of these totes. Just get a tote bag and stick everything inside that way. It's very por portable. Grab a pencil case and put all your pencils and pens in there, maybe scissors, whatever it is that you need, and you can hit the road with your school schoolwork. I love that you don't have to have internet, you don't have to be connected, it's just books. And those are very portable and you can do your schoolwork while you tra travel. Yeah, and those of you with babies, if you've got a giant diaper bag, that works too. You can stick it in there. Um, my working binder, like for me as the parent, is purple. I really like to color code in our family. Um, so also folders, I have a different color for each child. This happens to be my daughter's, my son is red. And then clipboards are great for travel too because you don't actually need a desk space. Again, I love clear things, um, but you can decorate them however you want. I'm also a huge fan of uh, car school with our tote bag as well. Laura asked about travel and how do we do this when we travel. Um, car school is typically for like a day or two if you're at the doctor, at lessons, things like that. But what do you think about if you're going on vacation, maybe for a week or two, or like we love to RV and so we'll go on longer term trips. How do you pack school for that? So my parents live in Italy and we would pack up a suitcase, a small carry-on size suitcase with all of our books for three, three kids for three weeks. And we, we did the same thing. I mean, you know, I'd pull out, I did not bring the big binder. I, I would bring all the weeks that I thought we would need and all the books that, that we would be covering in those three weeks. And we would hit, hit the road and we would school for part, part of the time, but part of being on a trip is exploring what's around you. And so that is also a learning situation. You're not just staying in the hotel room watching cartoons all day. You are exploring where, where you are, and that can count as school. So whether you pause some of the, the schoolwork, if you don't wanna do math and you just wanna focus on the HBL stuff, then that's all you bring, and you worry about the other things when you get back. And if you've worked ahead, if you've done weeks six, seven, and, and eight in the HBL, then when you get home, you do six, seven, and eight in the things that you didn't do, science or you know math or whatever. So yeah, I think you need to be flexible. You need to name what ma matters about this trip. Is it is it a time for the family to be together? Then you don't do school. But if it's if it's an extended trip that you're taking, 
in an RV or overseas and you know you're gonna be there a while and you don't plan on um, schooling throughout the su summer, you wanna take a break, then you just need to figure out what sub subjects you can do while you're on the road and which ones you'll put a pause on. But does that mean you don't do them? You just skip ahead? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't just skip because everything is sequential. Everything builds. Um, if you skip the history, you're going to have a gap, in, you know, in a time period in history. If you skip math, you're going to miss something important. So you just pick up where you left off and you keep going. It's okay. You can do that. Yeah, and I will say when we travel, the core academic subjects, we usually end up getting through less than we had planned, but read-alouds are great for a road trip or something like that. So we'll usually bring in extra. <laughs> we're back. We're back. <laughs> Sorry, we had some technical difficulties. So we were talking about a move. Um, I'm not sure where the video quite cut off. So let's talk about that again. If you're moving, whether it be internationally or just to a different state, and you're not quite sure how much time you're going to not be able to find all your stuff, what do you do about school then? So I think I would probably plan on double the amount of time that you would need. So if you think, oh, it's only gonna take me two, two weeks to move, well, I would plan on four because mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what's going to happen when you get there, and you don't know if you're going to find what you need. Um, but I will say, for long-term storage, even if you're moving and you want to be able to access your stuff, the boxes that your materials come in, your school stuff comes in, your sunlight boxes, these are very dur durable boxes. So whether it's a smaller one or the castle box is really, really strong cor corrugated car cardboard, this is a great solution to store your materials in. If you put all your school books in there, when you get to the new location, it says sunlight on the side and you know it's your school, <laughs> school books. But even for long-term storage, if this is what you're doing this year and you're done with your school, school year and you have ordered your next le level, you're gonna get your first grade stuff, then pack up the materials that you don't need. Obviously, you're gonna keep out your timeline book and, and your markable map and those required resources, but um, pack up the things that you don't need, that you won't need the following year in one of your um, sunlight boxes or a plastic tote. If you, if you love Rubbermaid totes as much as I do, then <laughs> You'd like to have an excuse you have to, worry to go about buy water them. Damage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't have to worry about water damage. That's happened to me with the um, the washing machine overflowed and it flooded the garage. So my books were safe. Yeah. But if they were in paper, they would not have been. Uh, but if money is an option, you know, just um, just store it in the in the boxes that they came in. Um, some people have basements you guys have basements around here in Florida we don't have basements so you have to get creative I didn't like to store my stuff in the garage because it's very humid and my books would warp so I would store them in closets and under the bed uh, because I did want them to stay preserved and I wanted to be able to access them when I had a younger child that I needed to be able to pull books out for um, but I did have the big shelves and so I would keep as much as out as I could and I would call like you know sometimes you buy stuff you go to a homeschool convention and you impromptu buy some curriculum that you think is going to be great and then you don't use and then you just go back to your sun sunlight book so just get rid of the stuff that hasn't worked for you um, and and save your bookshelf space for you the great books and that's actually something I do the only books I buy are my sunlight books or like my very favorite series of all time type of thing otherwise we go to the library usually two or three times a week and so we're able to bring in books I, I just love a real book I'm not a huge fan of you know books on my Kindle or audiobooks um, but we go to the library for that and then we do reserve our shelf space for our sunlight I love to keep the lower levels out because I have a third grader who likes to go back and reread some of those books that we read when he was young. Um, but yeah, if you do need to store them, big totes are great. Something that I do, I like to reuse my IG binders. And so I take all of my IGs at the end of the year and put them into a padded mailer. Um, and then I just write the child's name, what year it was, what level we did. Um, that way I can either come back and reuse these or if I decide I'm going to repurchase my IG, I'll do that as well. But then this goes really easily into a filing cabinet or one of those plastic totes as well, um, just so that I can then reuse my binder and I don't have, you know, 15 sunlight binders. My other tip is to save your sunlight cat catalog 
Although your IG will have a list of all the books that are in that level, sometimes it's just nice to be able to flip through and get the list of books. And so you could store this in your tote bag as well. So you can see, wait, was that, was that book in that level that year? Because this is going to have your current year. <laughs> Yeah, and that's a good point too. When your order comes, I can never figure out until I've started reading the books, what is my history book? What is my read aloud? And the catalog makes it easy. So I actually go through and check that with my new books to figure out, oh, what? That's a blue book. So now I can find it better in my stack. Um, so yeah, if you keep your catalogs, that might be a good refresher if you do have big gaps between programs. Um, let's talk about kind of the flow of your day and organizing your homeschool life. When you're new, I know, you know, this is our newbies group. So these, uh, the whole group is new to Sunlight. So how do you figure out kind of what your schedule is and how do you organize, you know, to get everything done or to teach the kids everything they need to know? So I highly recommend alternating between table and couch su su subjects. Sometimes I see people post that say, oh, my, my child won't sit still for history and read aloud and science and that's those are all couch so if you're spending three hours on the couch re reading then yeah your child is going to lose interest you know th their mind is going to wander same with the you know if you're sitting at the ta table doing handwriting and creative writing and math and phonics and workbooks and all that you also don't want to spend three hours at the ta table so it really helps to um to figure out a flow that works for you. A lot of people start by Bible at breakfast, so that would be a technically a couch sub subject, but you're doing it while the child is having breakfast, and so that way that you have a captive audience. You could keep them at the ta table and then move into math or creative writing or some, something like that. And then after you're done with that, then it's like, okay, let's take our rolly cart and move to the couch and then have a little couch time. So it's up to you on how you want your flow to work. Um, I also recommend putting your big rocks in first. So I say start with the hardest thing. For us, it was math because I didn't like math. So I knew that if we got math out of the way, it was all going to be downhill from there. For some of you, it may be creative writing. For some of you, it may be science. Maybe you're not a science person. So if you start the day with the hardest thing, then you get that out of the way. And then you everything else feels like, oh, it'll be, you know, a piece of cake. Yeah, and you can always save like the read aloud for a bedtime story or maybe a family read. A lot of times, you know, whichever partner is working outside the home, they like to be a part of read alouds. And so it's really fun to gather at the end of the day and do that. This is another plug for the rolly cart, but I love this because what I do, I actually let my kids kind of pick what order we do things in and I just pull the books out, set them on the table and say, okay, here's what we're doing today. What do you want to do first? Um, the more buy-in you get from your kids, usually the easier it is to get them to do what you need them to. Um, so I do choose, okay, we've got to cover history, we've got to cover Bible, we've got to cover science. Um, I don't like to skip a lot. Um, I know I uh, remarked on that in the app last week. I would prefer to slow down and still do it than to skip things. Um, but let your kids kind of dictate, okay, I love this, or I'm really into this book right now. Let's do this first. Or like Sheila said, get the hard one out of the way, the one they don't like, um, and then move on from there. But if you have your rolly cart with all your supplies, and I do keep my map and my timeline and all of that in here too, you can move around between the couch and the table. And I know my son, if I try to do a read aloud or something I'm reading to him at the dining room table, he will, nope, we can't do this. We have to go to the couch. And so this just makes it easy to pull things around and do that. Um, so yeah, that's how we schedule. Oh yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, you've got a board. I also use a little dry erase board. That's kind of the size of that tote that we showed earlier because I can stick it in my sunlight tote and do car school with my little dry erase board. But yeah, what, what do we have set up here and how can people utilize that? So we had a dry, much, much bigger dry erase board in our kitchen because you know that was Grand Central Station for us. And we did all kinds of things on there. So we might do the spelling words, you know, you might ha have them do that on there. Um, sometimes we would put the order of the things, you know, like we're gonna go in this order, we're gonna start with this, we're gonna do this, 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 and then the kids could check things off. It's fun for them to, to see the workload um, de decrease. Um, it can be the backdrop 
of um, maybe your your markable map like maybe you don't want to post this on your wall but this is something that you could easily attach to um, your dry erase board um, I did pull these are um, velcro dots so you could put velcro dots in the corner of your of your dry erase board and then on either side of your map and that way they just stick to the dots you can pull it off flip flip it around and do the other side if you want yeah i think that's a great idea and you mentioned the kitchen being command central so whatever space you have whether that be the kitchen or a separate schoolroom or whatever right. if you have an area like that um i know yeah spelling words math problems anything that they can erase easily is great also for those of you with older kids that are more independent if you find they consistently forget something for my daughter it's always for current events she forgets to that. And so I write that on our dry erase board too, so that she has another reminder. I also highlight it in her IG for her too. Um, you know, did you do everything you thought you did? Oh, you forgot your current events. So that way she can go back and do that as well. Um, let's see, we've kind of covered all of the school supply it. storage. We do have though, bookends. So let's say you are building your dream school room. I know sometimes we see that like, oh, I'm getting bookshelves or whatever. Um, but if you only have one or two ASPs, you don't have a full bookshelf yet. So when can these be really helpful for organizing your space? Yeah, so right now, the way I have it, I have the bo boxes that kind of help brace the, the books. But if you find a storage solution for that beside your bookshelf, then you will have books falling over. Or when you pull books out, they'll slip. So bookends are a great way and they have, you know, we have all kinds of si sizes, small and big. Um, you can do really cute ones. Like I have some that are like a globe, um, but these are very utilitarian, but they're very, very nice to have to keep your books from fa falling and, you know, making a mess. Yeah. Um, something too that just kind of popped into my mind was worksheets and like we talk about moving the IG to a working binder. What about like the science worksheets and language arts pages? You know, how much of that should you hand to the student or is there a way to organize those types of papers that your student needs to complete? So some people do like to pull those worksheets out and just put them in a, a, a binder, a, a, a folder like what, um, Yes, what Sunny <laughs> has here, with, which has the little three prongs, and you can just stick them in there. Or again, you can do that half inch binder, and each child can have their own. What I like about this is that it has a, um, a little pocket, so you can slide a piece of pa paper in here, and you can say, you know, Tommy's lang language arts, or just Tommy's worksheets, and, um, and that way you know, or you can stick color coded piece of, you know, paper in there and that way you know. Um, so I tended to give my child the worksheet the week that we were gonna use it. So if we're on week three, here's your week three language arts, here's your week three science, and then their completed worksheets went into that binder. But some people will spiral bind them and make it into a notebook. The problem what I see with that is that if you lose your notebook, you've lost them all. It's not just one sheet, sheet of paper that you're trying to replace. So that's why I, being the control freak that I am, it's in here when I pull my pa pa pages out, that is when I would distribute them. Um, what, what did you do? Yeah, so I also do it one week at a time if I give the kids anything ahead. Uh, I have one child who will crumple slash destroy it and the other one will lose it. So I also am very type A. I like to keep things where I know where they're at. And so I do keep them in the big IG and then as I'm moving my teacher like instruction pages over, then I do put them in a folder and say, here are your um, worksheets for this week. Great minds think, yeah. think alike. <laughs> and we know a lot of you who love sunlight kind of think along that same page yeah. too. So uh, we did see a question though about um, dropping some things and figuring out how to prioritize. And I know, especially those of you who have littles, it may feel like you're going all day and you can't get your feet going, you know, are you allowed to skip things in your IG or how do you know what has to be done? How do you schedule that to make sure that it's done and that you're meeting the standards? Because of course, every state has standards, countries have standards and you do have to get a certain amount of work done. Yeah, um, so I think I touched on that just a little bit before, like if you're tra traveling and you're gonna be gone for a week or two, do you just skip the weeks that you're gone? I would say no, you don't skip it because again, it is 
it's going to build so history is chronological so if you skip three weeks you will have skipped maybe the american revolution or whatever so you will have gaps um, and if you skip math again you're going to skip an important concept that is laying a foundation that you're going to be built building on so i wouldn't say skip ahead in weeks i would say pair things back especially the non essentials so for example of read aloud like if you're if you only have this much time and you're going to read aloud read aloud the history and drop the read aloud book um you may you may get you know a little um pushback because your child wants to hear the story which is fine then you do it at bedtime or you do it in the summertime like if you don't get through all of them you set some aside you can have story time during the summertime and now you have some great books that you you can use for your summer reading aloud time yeah, and I'm a huge fan of that. I think I had four read alouds that I didn't finish last year that we did over the summer. And so yeah, it doesn't mean you're putting them away forever. Um, I do not do a lot of the optional supplementary activities. Those are the ones in light gray. I love hands on history. So we always do those or like the lap books, but all of the language arts optional things, we don't typically do those. So if it bothers you to see it sitting there, Put an X through it. Take a Sharpie. Yeah, cross, and cross it out. Cross it out. No. Um, I do math down at the bottom of my IG so we don't forget math. Something that doesn't come in your IG, you may be forgetting to do it and then you realize, oh shoot, we went five days and didn't do this. So I do write that down in those blank spaces um, and check them off. But yeah, if you decide to skip a read aloud, go ahead and mark through it. But yeah, I'm with Sheila and like I said earlier, I prefer to slow down and take longer to finish things than to out and out skip them. But again, it kind of depends on your family and seasonally where you're at and are do you have kids combined in one program? Are you, you know, doing separate kids and separate programs? How old are your kids? All of that. So yeah, I think that's important to remember as well. Yeah, you don't have a hard and fast end date. So, you know, schools, they have to release on June 2nd. So they have to skip if, if they, um, if they don't get to something or, you know, maybe they're like, we had a hurricane hit Flor Florida last week. And I have a friend whose da daughter-in-law, um, she's a school te te teacher and they're not going to have school for two whole weeks because they're cleaning up debris. So they're going to have to do some sk skipping. But as a homeschooler, you just prolong your school for two weeks. And I'm not saying you have to school all sum summer long, but in the fall, you just pick up on week 30. And you start there and then you start the following, you know, new stuff when you complete your those six weeks and you just keep going. Exactly. Yeah. And I know I grew up in the Midwest. We had snow days off of school that as a homeschooler, you don't have to worry about those. You can keep, you know, doing school throughout the year, um, which brings up if a child is sick, what do we do if a child gets sick and, you know, whether you have one child or six children and you're trying to figure out what to do about their school? What do you do in that situation? I think it really depends on the child and how sick they are. Are, are they, you know, the kind of sick that they're asleep all day, then, then they're just homesick, you know, just, just like if they had, if they were in school, you would keep them home and they were home. Um, but if they're just a runny nose and you know, that they don't feel great, but they can still do some school, then I would do what I like to call the big rocks, math, science, history, um, uh, language arts. Language arts. Thank you. I was like, what's the fourth one? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, do do the big ones and let some of the smaller things go. Maybe you don't do spell, spelling. Maybe you skip a writing assignment. It's okay because the writing assignments build. Every year you're going to do descriptive mm -hmm. writing assignments and poetry and jur journal and news paper articles. Like you're going to get to those again next year. So if you skip a writing assignment this week, it's okay. There's going to be another writing assignment next week. Um, and those writing assignments do, like the kinds of writing that you're doing will repeat year after year. But if they can do some math, I would let them do math. If they can fo focus while you read aloud a little history or a little sci science, I would do those things. And you really have to decide just how sick your child is. There's no sense in you reading aloud to them and they don't understand and you're gonna have to repeat it anyway. Let them be sick, you know, it's allowed. Yeah, and I kind of, with your older kids that are more independent, I kind of leave it in their court. Well, you're going to have to get this done, so would you rather, in my daughter's case, she does not want to do extra later, so she'll do what she can do, you know, laying on the couch or whatever. 
um, to skip over that. Another thing, if you run out of time in your weekdays, remember you are homeschooling. You do not have to do school between eight and three o'clock every day, Monday through Friday. Um, if you did not have time to finish something during the week, we pull in the weekends. Uh, we've always done it that way. Usually Saturday afternoon or sometimes Sunday after church is, oh, we didn't get to this, so let's go over that. Or Yeah, and um, schools give ho homework, so yeah. it's just like <laughs> having homework on the weekend. It's okay. Exactly, yeah. So, so feel free to play with that schedule. Um, if you have any specific questions about how to do that, definitely post those in the app. Also, if you have any organization questions right now, please share those with us and Sheila and I will answer them. I want to make sure that we give you guys enough time and we don't miss those. Um, also, if you have some great ideas, yes, I've seen some ideas. people post, oh, I found this great binder and it's working for us and, and, and you post pictures of things that you have found that is wor working. I mean, we don't have all the, an the <laughs> answers. We have a little bit of history and, you know, we have that under our belt, but you you guys are finding great things and you can share it with your fellow Sunlighters too. Yeah, so for example, the rolly cart, I saw enough people post about that in our Sunlight Connections community that I was like, okay, I've got to try this rolly cart. And, now and you love it. I do, yeah, so now <laughs> I sing the, the rolly cart praises. Uh, same thing with the timeline. I've changed how I do the timeline with my younger child because of some great suggestions I saw. Um, so yeah, definitely if you find something that's working, share it with everybody so that we can see that um, as well. Another thing too is don't forget about your other resources that you may have to help you get organized or get scheduled. Um, just because you may be the primary teacher, it doesn't mean that you have to do everything. You know, can somebody else make dinner occasionally? Do you have kids that are old enough for that? Can your spouse do that? Um, go picking kids up or driving them to their activities or whatever it may be. I know I lean on my teenage daughter and my husband a lot to, oh, can you go, you know, switch the laundry over so that I can read with your brother or can you, you know, make dinner tonight? So don't feel like you have to do everything. Um, I know sometimes that's hard when you're a type A and you're the mom and all of that. Um, but yeah, you, you have other resources in your life. So definitely lean on those two to help you out. Um, Sheila, do you have any other advice for? No, I would say the the last thing. I mean, kind of mm -hmm. um, piggybacking on that. Um, my mom lives near us, and she she would have never homeschooled us, and you know that's just not not her thing. But she helps me out in other ways. When she was young, younger, she would cook for us. She would wash the floor because I don't like washing oh, wow. the floor. <laughs> she would iron for us. Like she's like, oh, g give me your ironing I'll just watch a show and I'll you know and um, otherwise it didn't get done I didn't have time to iron you know but if if that's something if you have someone in your life that um, whether it's a sibling maybe you have a sister who doesn't have kids and she'll and she would like to read aloud to them or or you have a grandparent who's really into art grandma can do the art you know all the elective kind kind kinds of things um, you can even I mean in this day and age with Zoom and FaceTime, grandma can read aloud the storybook while, you know, the child wa watches gra grandma on the screen. So yeah, in this day and age, there's so many different things that you can do to get the help that you need. Like Sunny said, it doesn't have to just be you. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't see any questions right now to answer. So again, if you have any, drop them at the end of the video. Because we have the weird glitch there, there may be two videos in the app. Uh, but hopefully, Jonna, who is our tech whiz, she can get all that together and, and easy for you guys to find. But yeah, if you have any questions, any other ideas, share them with us. Don't forget uh, that Friday is Photo Friday. So share all your photos, hashtag it Photo Friday so that we see them. Because uh, we would love to see what you're doing and what works for you. Let's see, it says, thanks for all the advice. We are packing for a trip now, leaving tomorrow. We spread a single week of work over a week and a half leading up to it, and we'll do the same when we are back. Perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, we were meeting the kids, pick just a few extras that they can do on their own pace on the trip, like worldly wise. That is a great tip, too. Yeah, if your kids want to bring something to do in the car, grab their readers, grab their read alouds, grab their math workbook, or yeah, supplementary option, like worldly wise. I love what you said, too, about 
you know, doing a week and a half leading up to it. And then when you come back, um, this is something I shared in a different live, but we did three weeks of school and then we went on a trip. Um, and so the kids knew, okay, we have to be through week three before we leave. But then anything we want to do on the road, that's kind of an extra to get us ahead when we get back. Um, so I know my daughter brought a bunch of stuff because she likes to stay up late at night and read her books before she goes to bed. Um, so yeah, work with your kids and kind of see what do they want to do? What do they feel like they can do? You obviously know them best and what they're capable of. Um, but that's a great, great piece of advice. Also, uh, something that I was thinking about earlier, we were talking about not skipping ahead. Um, if you are going to a place though, that has certain historical significance maybe, then you might wanna pull like a read aloud or read that section in your history book. I know we had kind of a last minute chance to go to Hawaii in the spring. And so we pulled out our uh, World Wars book from level E oh, and read about Pearl Harbor. And then we actually went and toured Pearl Harbor. So that might be something, you know, you're not really skipping ahead, but if you know you're gonna go to Gettysburg or, you know, someplace that has historical significance, pull out something from your sunlight books and read them together and kind of study up on it before you go. So, so smart. Yeah, <laughs> so that's something fun to do too. It makes it a little more real. Um, but yeah, thank you all of you for joining us. Sheila, thank you for all your tips. Sheila is quite the organization guru. I always love to now see I get to put this all back. The ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to put everything back. Um, also some of these baskets and things, uh, will be used in our sunlight convention booth. So make sure that you join us at convention in the summer. Um, and you'll get to see some great organization options there as well. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us today.